let's talk a little bit about ZSH plugins, which are probably my favorite part of ZSH. And in my opinion, they aren't used often enough from uh, regular developers. So plugins extend the, the functionality and the features of ZSH. Um, and just as if you were to have plugins for your Vim or Sublime Text or whatever you're using, um, someone had found a plugin extremely helpful to their workflow. So they wrote it and then they're sharing it so you can extend the functionality of your terminal here. So uh, I'm just on the oh my ZSH uh, GitHub here. I click on Wiki and there's a something called the Plugins Overview, which is a really nice listing of all of the possible plugins here. So let's just take a look. Um, we've got node plugins, we've got file system jumping around, uh, we've got productivity ones, ones for Python, one for Mac OS X, um, all kinds of really handy stuff. So let's first take a look at how to enable a plugin and then we'll take a look at some of the more popular ones. So um, let's jump back to our command line and the way we enable plugins is via our settings file. We've done this before. So just open up your uh, .zshrc file again. If you have Sublime Text installed, you can type subble home directory forward slash dot ZSH. And now that we know about tab completion, you really don't need to uh, type that much more. You can just hit tab. It'll give you a couple options here. There's a ZSH update file, a history, and a ZSH RC file is what we want. So ZSH RC is what we're looking for. I'm just going to open that on up. Here's our old theme that we already set. Uh, however, if you scroll down until you find plugins, you can see here is just a space separated list of possible plugins that you may be wanting. So uh, the first one we're going to take a look at is the extraction plugin. Um, let's take a look for it here. Here we go. Extract. Um, it's a Swiss knife for archive extracting. So a lot of times you'll get .zip or targz or all these different kinds of uh, compressed files and in order to open them from the command line it's actually pretty tough because you have to memorize all these uh, crazy commands so what we can do is just enable the extract plugin so I'm gonna go to my sublime text here I'm gonna put it on the end here give it a save now if I just type extract now it says ZSH command not found extract well how come that's because remember when we make a change to the ZSH RC file, it's not reflected until we do source. So we're going to do source .zsh RC. It's going to start everything over for us and move into the command line folder that we have. And there we go. So I've got here, I've got this WordPress plugin that I was using the other day. It's a dot zip and I want to be able to unzip it without actually having to open it up in my finder. So what we could do there is just type extract. And if I just hit enter there, it says, uh, here's my options. So extract, you have the op option to remove the archive, which when you unzip it, it'll delete the file as well as the file. So just type extract and now, oh shoot, I forget what it was called. I know it started with a W or maybe I didn't. If I just hit extract and tab, now I'm able to tab through all of my files and folders. In this case, there it is. WordPress multi and vig can make master. Hit enter. LL. You can see right here, there's that entire folder as well as the original zip file. Another one I really, really like is the Cloud App extension. So if you haven't used it before, Cloud App is really just a short URL um, thing. You can, you can shorten URLs or you can, I use it quite a bit to upload screenshots uh, that I'm sharing with people on Twitter or clients or something like that. So um, Cloud App is really, really cool. However, uh, if I have like this index.html file that I want to get to someone, my process before was I would type open and dot, dot refers to the current directory open will open up my finder and here I would get this command line folder and what I would do is I would drag this folder or this file into my cloud app and it would upload it. However, now I can do it without actually leaving the command line uh, at all. So I've enabled, let's take a quick look. I've enabled the cloud app gem here or sorry, the cloud app plugin. Uh, there's, a, there's a cloud app file you need to, need to use with your username and password. It's in the docs. Um, but I just have to type cloud app 
and I can hit tab to get all of my files, index.html is what I wanted, hit enter, give it a sec, and it's going to upload it to Cloud App, Cloud App for me. There we go, it's uploaded there. Again, we can use our little trick. If I hold down command and click, it opens it up right in my browser, and you can see this is the HTML of that. Really, really handy. A handful of other plugins are actually just uh, ability to give you autocomplete and um, sort of suggestions as to what you should be doing uh, in the case of, of Git or NPM or Bow or something like that. So let's take a look at some of those that just give you the, the possible options. So um, I'm just going to clear all this out of here. And in, in a previous video, I showed you command K, which would clear it out entirely. However, sometimes people like to maintain this history but they just don't want to see it because it's visually cluttered. So rather than hitting command K, which would just clear it all and you'd lose it forever. Uh, if you hit command R, what that does is it clears your screen, shows you the same thing. But if you scroll up, notice that it's all still there. So if you need to scroll back to it, not a problem. So again, command K will get rid of it for good. Command R will just kind of take it off the screen for you and, uh, and put your cursor up there. So let's take a quick look at what else I have here. Um, I'm a big node, I'm a big NPM user, um, I'm a big Git user. The problem is that there's all these options for NPM and there's all these options for Git that I forget what they're all called. Um, there's Git add and Git push and stuff like that, but sometimes there's uh, parts of Git that I forget how it's spelled or I forget what the name of it is. And all I have to do there is hit Git tab or sorry git space tab and it says uh oh do you want to see all 128 lines in this case yes there's so many options oops there we go and you're able to see all of the possible ones that you want it so uh, for example cherry pick uh apply changes introduced by some existing commit so you don't use cherry pick maybe not that often and uh, you forgot what it's called maybe you didn't know if there's a dash in it or not uh, you're able to get a quick look at what all of the available options are here. And when you find one, like uh, git diff, you just hit enter and it will put it in there for you without you having to write it out. Same goes for npm. You hit tab and what it does here is it gives you all of the possible ones. You can use your arrow keys to go over, up, down and, and find all of the possible ones like npm login it's probably not something you use that often or npm unpublish so it's nice to be able to view them all at a quick glance without having to leave your editor at all so those are git or sorry those are zsh plugins there's all kinds of cool ones and since the last time i checked even just uh, a couple of months ago there's all kinds of really nice ones uh, i think there's ones for controlling your volume controlling your itunes um, colorizing your cat, colorizing your man page. That's really nice. Um, so take a look at this, try a few out and, and let me know what some of your favorites are. I hope you enjoyed that. Make sure you check out my book and video series, Sublime Text Power User at sublimetextbook.com. Use coupon code command line for 10 bucks off. As always, make sure to subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Westboss, W-E-S-B-O-S. -S. Talk to you again soon.